All right, everyone. Well, good morning and happy Monday. This is Patty McCracken, Denver, Colorado, and it is an exciting day as we are on January 18th of the new year. And so always excited to come together on this NMD call and above to mastermind, gain new ideas, uh, ways of doing things, and just kind of come together to uh, get that excitement at the beginning of the month. There's nothing like leaving a call or starting off your week with a great amount of energy, excitement, and always some new and additional uh, training that we can go out there and build our organizations and teams with. And so I am going to get myself right out of the way this morning as we have a power-packed call with uh, one of our very own. Uh, This young lady has traveled all across this country uh, building, growing, and sharing her story, uh, developing organizations and teams, and really just having a lot of fun doing it. And so it really is my honor to really welcome her on this call as she has done so much. I remember the last time we had the opportunity of training together, it was just exciting to see her growth, you know, how, how poised she is, how much confidence she has on that stage, and how well she communicates. And so I can't think of anyone better to talk about communication and effective communication with our organizations, teams, and upcoming leaders than Ms. Brittany Burt. So, Brittany, are you with us this morning? I am. I'm here. Right. Thank you, Patty. Great. Take, of course. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much, and good morning, everybody. Um, so grateful to be on this call with you, and Thank you so much, Patty, for all you do uh, and for just inviting me to come share a little bit. I This is a topic that I was like thinking, okay, what's the most effective topic that I could maybe share about today that has made the biggest difference in recently over the last year, especially in just my building and what I've been doing with some of the leaders on the team. And so one of the things that really has made the biggest difference for me has been the language that I use as a leader. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about this morning is our language as leaders, specifically with our new brand partners and really with our leaders, (laughs) developing those leaders, and what's the difference between how we communicate and the words that we use that makes us more a leader or makes us seem like a boss to them. And I know that all of us have people on our teams. We've got leaders that we're going to have to spend a little bit of time coaching and helping them shift their language because you see them acting more like a boss with their brand partners and that can rub people the wrong way sometimes. And that's definitely not, we know that that's definitely not the the highest choice of communication for long-term growth. Um, and how, and, and for, for them to really step into a lower level leadership position, because so often I see that breakdown happen within teams where a brand partner start gets off to a great start and they hit the Lexus or they start to get to that leadership role level and they may not have the appropriate tools in their language to continue to perpetuate that team so they become a lid. And it's it's really it really comes down to how they're communicating with their group that can make all that much more difference to whether they come across as a leader that is a directed, they have direction and purpose through the language that they convey and communicate to their team, even starting off at the senior director level, or are they just a cheerleader? Are they a senior director who just kind of cheers their team along? And we know that that is another lid that won't get people to the next level. It won't get their brand partners to the next level or themselves. Um, you know, or are they coming across more like a boss? And we know that that doesn't last very long, especially either when they get to that senior director level. So how can we as higher level leaders empower the lower level leaders with some key language? So this is really for us to use, but also for us to teach the lower level leaders so that they can step into that leader who is directed with purpose earlier on. 
and they gain more respect from their brand partners that way. They feel more empowered and they create a closeness and a synergy within their little nucleus, their little team that they're creating that's going to grow bigger and become a much bigger team. So it doesn't remain little. It grows beyond that because their leadership level is raising people up because of their communication. So that's the difference that I wanted to really hit on today. And there, the first element that I wanted to talk about is the less empowering language that even we find ourselves using, at least, at least I do, and I have. And part of this process is catching ourselves and helping our leaders catch themselves when they're communicating. And it's not about beating ourselves up about it, but it's like an awareness to have. Because once you're aware of it, you start catching yourself and correcting more often. So the less empowering language that some people find themselves using when communicating with their teams um, are, are what I would say the you language. You and then also what's called model operators of necessity. So one of the things that a model operator of necessity, M-O-D-A-L, is something that conveys that, for example, I have to, you have to, you must, need to, you need to, I need to. Um, all of those things are what's considered a moving away from motivation. And they don't feel super great when they come across. So someone that's acting in the position of more of a boss um, is going to use the model operators of necessity more often in their language. You'll see that in a text thread. If you have one of your senior directors create a text thread, with you involved, with with their team, it's very interesting because you'll be able to see how they're communicating to their organization if you're in that text thread, and you can watch the language that they're using. And sometimes they'll be, my team, you guys need to, um, you know, just very stuff that separates them you'll notice a difference because there will be a clear distinction and a separation between where they are and almost like they're looking down at and pointing at their team like there's a disconnect there. And that's not what we want. We want language that creates unity and brings the group together. So it's just an awareness. And for a new person, they don't know that. They don't understand that. So you guys need to, we need to do, you know, this, we have to do this something like that, or you, um, and, you know, also I'll give you another example of some other language that someone that's acting in that position might be. If you don't blank, you will fail or blank. Um, <laughs> you know, so this is kind of obvious to all of us, scare tactics and using too much fear of loss with people. We know that fear of loss is super important because it 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 really is a temporary motivator. And what I what I mean by that is you know, people are either moving away from something or moving towards something. And these words in this language creates a moving away from motivation, which, you know, if you don't blank, you will fail or blank. I mean, yes, you, that you're going to move away from something because you're afraid of something, but at the same time, it doesn't last very long. And what what creates, um, you know, continued movement forward is a moving towards motivation. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of that in a minute, but this would be considered a moving away from motivation, which is always temporary. Um, that's why roller coaster results ensue and roller coaster results get created because if they don't want something and they're moving away from something and they're afraid of something, um, they're afraid of failure, they're afraid they're doing this wrong, they're afraid of this, they're going to move away from it, but then they're going to come right back to it because there was nothing there to keep pulling them forward. There was no vision, there was no purpose, there was no directedness. There was no positive motivation to move them in that direction. So it's temporary. 
Um, another thing would be, why didn't you blank? <laughs> Which we know that's just not not appropriate. Why didn't you, you know, make that list? Why didn't you make those phone calls? Why didn't you do that? There's so much of a higher choice of language that we can use there. Um, do blank. So just this is another boss uh, type of non-leadership uh, language tactic is just telling someone, do this, do that, telling them what to do. That doesn't go over very well. Did you do blank? Um, so there's just there's better language that we can all use when communicating. And, you know, some of the things that we are going to come in contact with as leaders are coaching. And how can you how can we coach somebody and without without them feeling um, defensive and maybe getting angry because we deal with that where there may be disagreements on the team or you need to give someone coaching on something that they're saying or doing. How do you go about that while leaving them feeling empowered and inspired? Because as a leader, we always want to leave someone on that note, but we also want to be able to give them the constructive criticism and the constructive advice to help them make their business better. So when it comes to mediating a disagreement in the team or coaching somebody, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like the feedback sandwich that we all know, um, <laughs> you know, positive on the front, you know, critique in the middle, positive on the end. But what I like to do is these are some examples of just language. If you're writing that you could write down, um, you know, I always separate the behavior from the person. That's what I learned is when critiquing or condemning something, you always want to condemn the behavior and not the person. So if somebody, let's just use this as an example, somebody is acting like a boss to their team, let's use that example, and you want to give them some constructive advice on their language around the way that they're treating their team. Maybe they're just like pouring it on too hard. They're bossing them around. They're telling them what to do. They're doing all the things that I just mentioned above using the less empowering language you have to, you must to, you know, you won't do this or you'll fail, whatever, whatever they're saying, and they're pushing them really hard, and you've gotten feedback that they're being rubbed the wrong way, and um, they could be using better language. So I always start by complimenting them. You're very blank and blank. You're a very kind and aware person. You're very smart and aware. You're very giving and supportive. You're such a driven and caring person. Something like that. Just pick a couple of traits that you would you would recognize them for. And I see that you always want the best, most successful results for the team. So I don't say your team because then we're putting ownership, right? And those are part of the model operators of necessity, the ownership, all of that, which creates separation between you and the team between them and the team. So what I'm trying to do is create unity with my language here. Um, and I say to them, <clears throat> I see that you always want the best, most successful results for the team, which is amazing. So I'm building them up. I'm always creating a positive vision. I noticed, I, I noticed that. I'm aware that. I observed that. It came to my attention that. Those are all words and statements that separate the behavior from the person. So instead of, I heard that you did this, or, you know, so-and-so told me this, I observed that, I'm aware that, it came to my attention that such and such happened, such and such may have taken place. So now you're you're proposing it while creating the disconnect. Hopefully I'm making sense here. You guys can understand that. You're creating enough of a disconnect between them and what happened that it's not necessarily directed at who they are as a person. It's directed at their actions. It's directed at the behavior that was taking place. So something happened. Um, a few of them have been feeling some pressure and uncomfortability 
and there are a few things that may have been said that caused them to feel that way. So this is key right here. There are a few things that may have been said that caused them to feel that way. So you're not saying you said this, which made them feel this way. You're not creating that link there, but you're really creating more of a space. And then they'll probably ask you what was said, and then you can say blank, blank may have been said, is, is that right? Or is that, is that somewhere along the lines of what took place? So you're asking them for, the, for their perspective, for their side, instead of assuming, hey, what, what's your perspective? What took place? Do you recall, you know, what might have happened? Um, okay, either way, I totally understand your intention behind it only to make them stronger and run faster, just like you. So you validate their positive intention behind what was said or done. So recognize that you see that, that it was always stemming from something positive, okay, from their positive intention. Whether you believe it or not, here's the thing. You're implanting your belief into that person through this. And I wanted to ask you if I could give you some suggestions of even better words to use next time that I think will bring you even closer to them and leave them feeling the most supported. So I wanted to ask you if I could give you some suggestions of even better words to use next time that I think would bring you even closer to them and leave them feeling the most supported. So now you're not saying that they gave bad advice. You're saying, can I give you some suggestions of even better words? You're using words like even better, even closer, most supported, even more. That creates momentum in a positive direction for them and is not condemning the past of what was done. Okay. <laughs> so, so. Um, you know, from there, I would say something like, awesome, well, next time around, and there will be many other times, that's what leadership is about. If blank comes up, I would say blank. So talk about the future. Okay, next time around, and there's going to be other times, trust me, where this stuff is going to come up on the team, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is what leadership is about. And, you know, if it comes up, this is what I would say and now you're giving them your advice. So you created a nice space there with them where you built them up and um, disconnected them from the behavior that was done. You said, this is what I've observed, this is what I've seen. Hey, you know, I totally understand your intention. You're only wanting to do this. You know, I wanted to see if I could give you some suggestions of even better words to use next time around, even better way to go about it even better way that would leave them feeling more supported and you in more of a leadership role. So now you're building up, keep, keep telling them that, hey, can I give you some tools that will help you feel like even more of a leader in their eyes? Um, these are things that I was taught by my mentors. So that's, that would be in, in a mediation um, <laughs> between two people and then also in giving some coaching to some of the brand partners or leaders. I use that all of the time in the business, all the time <laughs> to give coaching to the team. And it's really, really effective because it just leaves them feeling, feeling really supported and empowered instead of having things pointed out and feeling like they've done something wrong um, it's really effective. So moving on to the next piece from that, from the coaching aspect is, you know, the difference between what we talked about in, you know, coming across like a boss and having that disconnect, that lid over the team, and then also the cheerleader lid as well. And the cheerleader language is something that we want to make people aware of too, um, which is very, you can do it, you got it. I'm here for you if you need me. Call me if you need me, <laughs> you know. Um, it's so funny leaving a game plan sometimes with some new brand partners and, 
they say something like that. Okay, great. Call me if you need me. <laughs> and they're like walking away from this poor baby brand partner that just signed up. And, and um, so being able to give them some other resources that creates more engagement with the new person, because our language has a lot to do with the way they're going to leave feeling in their head about your interaction with them. Are they going to feel comfortable, you know, creating a line of communication with you or with their upline leader? And it's our responsibility through our language to create that unity, that line of communication, that relationship, and pre-set up what's going to happen in the future with our team and our brand partners. We, through our language, can pre-frame and presuppose the activity of our team and really create so much more motivation, desire, moving towards motivation uh, with our language. It is the most powerful thing to inspire people and get their mind focused on moving forward, moving towards, instead of moving away from what they're afraid of and what they don't want. With our language, we direct them towards where we want them to go and leave them feeling really good. So the leadership words, let's go into that really quick here. Um, leadership, uh, this, is, this is a statement that I would use as a leader. I'm personally working with a select group of committed up-and-coming leaders this month, and you're on that list. Only if you're open to it, that is you know, to us talking daily, to us staying in contact. So this is something that I would say to like my Focus 30 group to really see it, it get them mentally engaged. Now, what you're doing here is you're, you're building them up and creating unity and you're making them feel good, but you're also creating a healthy disconnect between your leadership level and where they're at so that there's respect there. So that's one of the biggest things, aside from third-party edification and using other upline leaders to edify you to create that triangle of edification, here's a way that you can do it yourself through your own language. I'm personally working with a select group of people that I've hand-selected um, that are committed up-and-coming leaders this month, and you're on that list, only if you're open to it but I want you to know that we'd be working together like every other day, you know, I, I see you as somebody that's going to walk that stage and get that $50,000 bonus. Your words as a leader, our words are the most powerful in building someone's belief that they can do this. So constantly using words like that are very important, but making that language powerful that your time is valuable. So now they're going to treat it better with more respect. Um, so another thing that I might say to them is start making those calls and let me know how it's going as you're doing it. So if I just train someone and give them a little bit of coaching on how to make calls, I'm going to not say, okay, I'll talk to you later, but hey, start making those calls. Let me know how it's going as you're doing it. So now you're creating a line of communication between you and that person. I would love to hear from you. Let's keep a constant line of communication going. I would love to be a part of and know who you're reaching out to. That's a big one. I would love to be a part of and know who you're reaching out to. Can we stay in contact about that? Will you give me updates? Will you give me text message? Okay, let's check back in at such and such time. So now you're regulating and managing the time and the interactions that are going on instead of just leaving them be to go do it. You're, you're creating that link that will cause them to want to call you back. They won't be afraid to call you back and reach back out to you. Um, another bit of language that the leaders use, I know you can do this. I believe in you. I remember feeling the way you do, and I'm certain you're getting that Lexus. So you're, you create familiar, create that commonality, that rapport. I remember feeling exactly the way that you do, and I know that you're going to get that Lexus. Through our language, we have to convey absolute certainty and absolute belief to our team. As a leader, we are unwavering. We are consistent. We are strong. We are the rock. We cannot show a single break 
in our leadership ability and it always comes through in our language. So how solid we are in our language with people is the way that they're going to feel and they're going to continue to follow. So I can't wait to see you walk that stage. You have it. You have everything that it takes to do this. I'm so proud of how you're going about this business. It's exactly the way to do it. You're right on track. So these are all belief builders that you want to leave a phone call with. This is how I leave a phone call with brand partners are just big belief builders. It, it is so amazing to see the effect of just these little language tools with people and how empowered they feel when you leave an interaction with them. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the best thing in the world to them to hear that from someone that they look up to. That, that really does believe in them. And, and that's when you start hearing from people like we all have, we've experienced this, um, you know, that they couldn't have done it without us, that we believed in them when they didn't believe in themselves. That's us. And that's what we, we should be doing. That's the most essential thing for us to be doing um, with all of our leaders as well. Um, last few things. I'm so excited about the future that you will have because of what you're doing right now, validating the activity that they're doing right now. You have what it takes to blow this business up. You're going to impact so many lives. I have total confidence in you. I hope you're ready to go all the way because I'm in this with you. Really huge, huge language here. You're so great at blank. I love that you blank. Because you're so blank, and I would say something like coachable, willing to work, have a desire, I know you're getting that bonus. It's on its way. So again, validating them and validating the qualities that you look for in leaders. So they may not possess certain qualities just yet, but they absolutely have the potential to, and maybe you've seen it here or there, coachable, willing to work, have a desire validate them for those qualities. Say, look, these are the qualities because you're so coachable. That's exactly why you're going to do blank because you have such a big desire. Now you're reaffirming the qualities that are going to get them to get the results in their business. You, you, through your language, you're bringing that to the forefront of their mind and they go, oh my gosh, I am coachable. Okay, I'm on track. Oh my gosh, I do have a desire. Okay, let me pour more desire on. Their mind starts, you're basically telling them what to notice. And they're going to amplify it. And they're going to bring more of it. You guys, this is just, it's amazing. It's so powerful. It's, it's all, you know, psychology and the way that the brain works. Um, let's, using words, unity words, like let's, we, together, team, we get to, we're excited to, we can't wait to, want to, inspired to, motivated to, love to, I will. Those are all model operators of possibility. And those are the type of language words that leaders use, not the model operators of necessity. But let's, we together, we get to, excited to, can't wait to, we're inspired to make those three-way calls. Um, that little shift right there will make a huge difference in how they feel about going about certain activity. Um, if we can implant those model operators of possibility versus the model operators of necessity. So can't wait to, want to, inspired to, excited to. Um, and I actually had a lot more on here that I was going to cover, but maybe I'll come back another time and do that as well on the language side, because I think there's a lot more rabbit holes we can go down on there. Um, and I know we've got our NMD call. So um, I just want to say thank you so much, guys, for, for letting me share this. It is, you've made the hugest difference. And, you know, I'm just, it, it, it's something that we can definitely dive into even more deeply as leaders and share that with our up and coming senior directors and leaders so that they can raise their level of leadership and respect and trust and unity within their team as well. So Patty, um, thank you so much. I know that we have 
Puya uh, on doing this call next next week. Amazing leader um, with so much respect for him. So guys, have an incredible week. I appreciate you so much. Um, I'm going to sign off and uh, we'll hop on the NMD call. <laughs> Bye.